Hello and welcome back to Aviationary. Go where you feel the most alive. Today we'll be talking about emergencies at an airport and the airport emergency plan. With this video, we will try to touch upon the different types of emergencies on and off an airport and also discuss the response of different agencies and stakeholders both on and off an airport to handle a situation of crash at an airport. And further, we will move on to discuss airport emergency plan and airport emergency exercises carried out at an airport. So, let's get started. Let us start with notification of aircraft emergency. There are two sources from where we can get the notification of an emergency. Number one can be from the pilot. When the situation of emergency is experienced by the aircraft, in flight and communication, that is radio communication still exists, the pilot in command of that aircraft is responsible for advising the air traffic control regarding the desired state of readiness or emergency response of the aerodrome and local emergency services. There is a deep meaning lying in the desired state of readiness which we will understand in the subsequent slides. Number two, the notification of aircraft emergency can also be received from the air traffic control. If communication between the aircraft and the ATC are strained or non-existent and the problem becomes known, the air traffic control unit will assess the situation and bring the aerodrome and local emergency services to the state of readiness as considered appropriate. Now that we have discussed the notification of emergencies, let us understand the types of emergency and understand the level of readiness we were talking about. The air traffic control at an aerodrome has the responsibility for alerting the emergency services following a request from the pilot or when an aircraft is considered to be in danger as considered by the air traffic controller on watch requiring any of the following emergency notifications. So number one, local standby. Local standby is declared when an aircraft approaching an aerodrome is known or is suspected to have developed some defect but the trouble is not such as would normally involve any serious difficulty in affecting the safe landing. So what we understand by local standby is that there may be some difficulty or some technical glitch in an approaching aircraft but there are high chances that the aircraft will successfully have a safe landing. The decision to declare local standby for an aircraft emergency rests with the air traffic control. So basically, local standby declaration brings all the aerodrome emergency services to a state of readiness. The second type of emergency is full emergency. Full emergency is declared when an aircraft approaching the aerodrome is known or is suspected to be in such trouble that there is imminent danger of an accident. So this becomes an upgraded version of the local standby. The decision to declare full emergency again rests with the air traffic control. Number three is the aircraft accident. This is a state in which the aircraft has had an accident on or in the vicinity of the aerodrome. Some other kinds of emergencies can be in-flight mass casualties which can be due to turbulence or food poisoning. Number two can be fire on ground which can be related to an aircraft that may be parked on the apron or aerodrome structural fires which can be building fires at an aerodrome. Number three is dangerous goods accident or incident which can be due to the spillage or leakage of any dangerous goods. Number four is CBR and emergencies, which stands for chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear emergencies. Number five can be emergency declared due to some natural disaster as well. Now that we have understood the different types of emergencies, let us imagine a situation of aircraft accident. The ATC activates the crash alarm immediately if one of the following situation occurs. When the aircraft accident is sighted by the ATC or is reported to the ATC by any of the reliable sources such as the Firewatch Tower or the Follow Me Vehicle, 
During poor visibility, when the air traffic controller is unable to sight the runway and the aircraft, which has been cleared for takeoff or landing, it fails to respond to the ATC's repeated calls or inputs from other sources have indicated that the aircraft might have met with an accident. Or when the aircraft has been cleared to land and it fails to land within 5 minutes or within the estimated time of landing and communication with the pilot is not able to be re-established or inputs from other sources indicate that the aircraft might have met with an accident. So when these three situations occur, the crash alarm is immediately pressed by the air traffic controller. So as we move forward, we will try to understand the roles and responsibilities of all the responding agencies. After pressing the crash alarm, the location of the accident is notified using the grid map to point out the exact location for all the agencies to respond. The notification of crash. While notifying the situation of crash, the air traffic control presses the crash alarm and dictates crash, crash, crash and passes on further information like the aircraft type and the flight number, the location of the crash using the grid map as in the image here which is a map made up of grids and the exact location can be identified by a set of numbers and alphabets identifying the exact grid in the map. The time of the incident is also notified and also the persons on board which help the ARFF to respond accordingly, the aircraft operator and other details like fuel on board or any DG on board which help in further enhancing the information being passed on. The first responders to any aircraft emergency or crash are the ARFF or the Aircraft Rescue and Firefighting Team. Some of its roles and responsibilities include aircraft rescue and firefighting, supporting triage activities which is basically done at the triage area which is a location that is set up near the crash site where the triage operations or sorting of casualties is done based on the requirement of treatment and transportation. This is an area that is set up approximately not less than 100 meters upwind from the aircraft. Here, the triage is performed based on the requirement of care. So the casualties are divided into four categories. T1 being the casualties who require immediate care. T2 are the ones who require delayed care. P3 who require minor care and P4 are the deceased casualties. Another responsibility of ARFF is also the activation of mobile command post, which is the on-scene command coordination and communication center for any accident. This is the point where heads or representative of all cooperating agencies assemble, receive and disseminate information and make major decisions regarding the rescue operations. Other responsibilities of these team include responding to dangerous goods accident incident, assisting the medical first aid, providing assistance required by doctors in the triage area, and arranging speedy evacuation of injured casualties, especially P1 and P2 to the hospitals. The ARFF also designates a transportation officer who helps in clearing the crowd near the accident site to facilitate smooth transfer of P1 and P2 casualties. Other roles and responsibilities include liaisoning with airline concern for the transport of P3 passengers to the survivors reception center which is generally set up in the terminal, liaisoning with the Crisis Management Center or the CMC regarding the requirements of medical team, ambulance and fire vehicles. CMC is a center which functions as the overall overseeing and controlling authority of the crisis mitigation process. This is the place where the airport director, the senior most officer, the chairman, the terminal management, head of operations, the local administration, the, all the authorities sit together and make strategic decisions regarding the mitigation of an emergency. The ARFF also establishes communication and appraises the development at the accident site to the CMC. So here we understand that ARFF has a major role to play during any aircraft accident. Now let us understand the roles and responsibilities of the airport operation and control center. As the name suggests, 
they are the nerve center acting during any emergencies the main roles and responsibilities of aocc include dissemination of aircraft accident message through phone or auto call as per the activation list for a typical type of emergency control and coordination with all agencies till cmc is established intimation to special agencies based on the type of emergencies like in case of cbrn emergencies the inmas and the ministry of health affairs is informed they also have the responsibility to coordinate with atc as per requirement and also coordinate with atc for priority landing and take off of aircraft coming and going with disaster relief facilities to and from various locations now let us discuss the roles and responsibilities of air side operations team it is a responsibility of the air side operations team to provide follow me to all the external agencies like the ambulances or the state fire services and other vehicles that have reported at rvp to the accident site and back they also provide inputs to the atc regarding any runway or taxiway closure if required the air side operation team initiates notam based on requirement and also inspects availability of any alternate runway or taxiway and reports the same to the tar supervisor the air side operations team also inspects and completes all other airport inspections based on requirement after the termination of airport emergency and it is also the responsibility of this team to restore the aircraft movement area for operations and also coordinate for any aircraft recovery now let us understand the roles and responsibilities of the terminal operations team it is this team that sets up the survival reception center which is a designated area that is set up to receive the p3 and uninjured passengers other than the flight attendants here a detailed documentation of these passengers is done which can be used to reunite them with their friends and family and also for the purpose of investigation it is this team that sets up the friends family reception center or the ffrc which is an area secure and away from the media's attention where the friends and families of those involved in the accident is received and the documentation of these people are also done in this area reconcile or reunite after the documents have matched it is the responsibility of terminal operations to receive and facilitate passengers who are present in src ffrc and the reunion area it is this team that makes public information announcements it is the responsibility of this team to do all the facilitation of passengers and restore business at the terminal buildings it is this team that must support in case of building evacuation it is responsibility of this team to arrange refreshment and water at the crash site and also guide media persons and vehicles to the media center now let us go through the roles and responsibilities of the airlines it is their responsibility to provide ground service staff and facilities like the passenger step ladders coaches and aircraft towing equipment It is their responsibility to manage the SRC, FFRC and RA and facilitate reunion of survivors and next of kin. They must provide staff for tracking and facilitating of pack casualties coming to the respective hospitals. It is also their responsibility to manage the media and make press releases. They must also collate information to the CMC regarding the number of casualties admitted at the hospitals. and also support the overall crisis mitigation efforts for example the counting of passengers management of next of kin aircraft accident investigation process they must also report the aircraft accident or serious incident to the authorities concerned as stipulated under the aircraft rule to 2012 investigation of accidents it is their responsibility to coordinate with police in handing over the dead bodies to the next of kin of the deceased They must also ensure the removal of wreckage and disabled aircraft as soon as it is authorized by the appropriate authorities like the DGCA or AAIB. Now let us understand the roles and responsibilities of the airport security group. It is their responsibility to open the respective gate for the activation of the rendezvous point and in case an aircraft crash occurs outside the airport 
it is their responsibilities to open the crash gates and they are also responsible for coordinating the accident site they must also facilitate the access of emergency services to the accident site in liaison with the following they are also responsible for helping the medical team at the triage area they are also responsible for making all security arrangements at the emergency center the cmc and the media center they must also ensure that the wreckage or the debris and belongings of all passengers and crew are not disturbed or moved from the accident site till it is permitted by dgca or aaib it is their responsibility to escort the cabin crew and the cockpit crew to the airport medical center for required tests to be performed on them and it is also their responsibility to support the rescue team in handling of the casualties in addition to these agencies there are many other agencies which help during the aircraft accidents which are the project and the engineering team which help in the quick restoration of the crash site the it department the safety and compliance department the corporate communication team which makes all the press releases the cargo operations team the state fire services the external hospitals the apho or the airport health organization the state police the traffic police which help in streamlining the traffic to and from the airport the immigration and the customs department which are involved in case the accident involves any international passenger and the metrological department the exact prediction of emergencies at an aerodrome is certainly not possible but preparedness for it to mitigate the effect is surely possible so with this we move to airport emergency plan or the aap the purpose of the airport emergency plan or the aap is to prepare emergency services and aerodrome operators to cope up with an emergency occurring on or in the vicinity of the aerodrome the plan basically dictates the procedures to be carried out for coordinating the response of different agencies responding to the emergencies there are also planned mock drills conducted at an airport to test this airport emergency plan and identify gaps in the plan so with this we come to the end of this video hope you enjoyed this video as much as i loved making it do visit our website avianavi.com for more such informational content to like share and subscribe because your support is our motivation you can follow us on linkedin the link of which is given in the description this is anvesha pal signing off thank you